So this month's live stream was all about nodes and there was a load of information like an insane amount and I think people have been waiting to see this for a long time. So in this video we're just going to cover what was talked about in the slideshow as this month's live stream had an insane amount of information I'll probably have to put it in other videos as well. So without rambling on anymore we'll just jump right into the video and get amongst it all. Stephen and Margaret were joined by two of the development team this month and the two members that joined them were Dr Bucky who was one of Intrepid's gameplay designers and we've heard him in quite a few of the last streams and the other member was Chris who is a senior game designer at Intrepid Studios and his main focus at Intrepid is the node system. So getting into citizenship, to be a citizen of a node you're going to be required to have some sort of housing in the node's jurisdiction. The forms of housing accepted for citizenship are inns, apartments, static housing and freeholds. So inns are a new form of housing, in ashes of creation and they're intended to be the most accessible form of housing due to the other forms of housing being quite limited and difficult to go for. Inns are available in the starting area as well as before you get into any node zone of influence and will provide additional storage and some furniture application depending on the type of room you're going to be renting. Inns and apartments are rented and are instant however you can invite players into that instance. But citizenship is considered one of the most foundational aspects of ashes of creation and being a citizen of a node you're gonna have to pay a reoccurring fee to retain your citizen status but that does come with its benefits such as reduced service fees reduced tax rates access to the node's relics and also access to unique vendors these vendors depend on what type of node you're situated in if you want to leave a node and no longer be a citizen there you can you have to go to the town hall to announce your citizenship which will then trigger a cooldown before you can become a citizen and elsewhere. If your node is destroyed though, it's not the end of the world, the node siege system has a refugee status and it's going to be applied if that happens. This means that you'll be able to become a citizen elsewhere immediately at another node once you've acquired housing in that node's jurisdiction. The refugee status may also reduce the citizen dues and some of the costs associated with it. Apart from inns, the amount of housing in a node will increase as the node advances and also can be increased by the mayor such as building more or improving the apartments in the node the numbers of how much housing will be available however are still being decided and i imagine it could be still changed due to alpha 2 when they kind of get into the server and start testing all of the shit out now freeholds will be the most exclusive housing followed by static in node housing followed by apartments and then followed by inns if a player stops playing the game they're eventually going to be evicted if they stop paying the taxes which is allowing other players to use that housing and that is probably one of the best things because it's replayability and you shouldn't be able to log in every fortnight or every week just to maintain it you should have to be actively using that because it's unfair and the people that are active in game and if you don't like that then that's on you but this is the fairest way I believe of doing it and I think Intrepid are doing an excellent job by implementing these things. Now breaking down the second slide it was all about mayorship and mayorship is really an important part of nodes. The mayor is tasked with initiating changes to the quality of the node. There are four ways a mayor can be elected and these depend on the type of node. So in a scientific node it's a ranked choice vote. In an economic it's a blind bid auction where basically the guy with the most money wins. In a divine it's PvE events where players will have to grind out the most favour and in a military which is really cool it's trial by combat event where the node enters a state where it's a free for all with the object where your performance will award you points. Citizens who aren't registered can choose to back a candidate and help them and PvP with them. What a mayor can do within a node to benefit players is different from node to node and can be affected by that type of node, the location or biome of the node and even the predominant race of the node. There's going to be a difference in all nodes and all types of mayorship and I think that's really decent because it's like kind of fresh and it's not the same shit over and over again and it really does add to that dynamic world that they're trying to sell and to be so far they, they are doing a good job of proving that they can do this and they are on the right track. Now there's a lot of benefits from being a mayor and it includes stuff like rare titles, even unique mounts, armor cosmetics and event abilities and just the prestige and reputation. I'm sure there's in-game benefits that you can all think of if you're running the guild so there definitely is advantages to going at mayorship. 
If a mayor stops playing the game though, the decisions will be made by the system instead, as there's a period of time in which the mayor can respond, and then there is an election cycle, so then you would basically get someone else to win the election and replace them. So if someone's just a mayor and they're being a dick and inactive and they're totally useless, they're not locked out for ages and ages, you can get rid of them, so it's not like it's massively going to be a detriment to your gameplay, you really do have some say in what's going on in the world. So the next slide was all about mandates and what are mandates? Well mandates are an energy system to enable the mate to take actions for the node such as enabling service building or constructions in the node. For a mate to generate mandates the citizen of a node must participate in these activities. Some of the participation includes contributing to the construction of buildings, voting on policies, taking part in mayoral caravan, node walls and sieges. So essentially the more the citizens like what the mayor is doing and the more they get involved the more power the mayor is going to get and therefore the more the mayor is going to get to do. The less the citizens like what a mayor is doing obviously they're going to participate less meaning the mayor has less power and can do less. Now this is really a good way of putting play into the people's hand. If you're trying to sell a dynamic world to people there's going to be people who are going to try and manipulate that and make it not so dynamic and control every aspect and take the control away from players and it's just the way competitive games go but putting these safeguards in place where these people constantly have a say not only is it better for immersion it's just better to stop people fucking around with other people's gameplay and griefing like it really is cool that they're making sure you're a part of every fiber every aspect in this game and you really have control of what you want to do within the game to a certain degree and you can kind of get involved in everything and I, I do think it is the future of MMOs they are leading the way on showing what an MMO should be like and they're not going down the path of these dog shit money grab MMOs that 90% 99% of MMOs are these days it's pretty terrible but yeah I, I'm quite happy with what I've seen it, it's pretty amazing what they're doing now mandates are going to be needed to do such things as changing taxis bypassing policy voting initiating constructions or even destructions expanding buildings mayoral commissions and certain policies there's currently no cap on mandate as the system has a cooldown built into it which means only so many actions can be done in a certain time period however when testing is being done during alpha 2 they may introduce a mandate cap but these are things we already know and we really won't 100% see how everything works and things are going to change until we get in alpha 2 and the players the thousands of us testing get to really go hard at this and this is literally just the only way Intrepid could do it so not only that there's going to be citizenship chat where the mayor will be able to talk to citizens of the node and I think that brings in a nice interaction and get good feedback and see you know how or what they're wanting within that node if it, it is really fucking cool but there is no way you can affect elections while being a mayor to get yourself kept in power other than being a good mayor new mayors will not inherit the old mayor's mandate they will reset to the default amount so that's also good that we know no one's going to be able to abuse this because at the end of the day this shit should be earned and kept and you know it's a very strategic thing that you're going to have to go out hard and you're going to have to be smart if you really wanted to be a long-term mayor. Now the next slide was all about mayoral commissions. So mayoral commissions are a time-limited simple type request that have a singular objective that are meant to help the node in some way and then the node will be rewarded based on the amount of players that complete these commissions. These are a good way to generate mandates as if a lot of citizens help out to complete them you're going to get even more mandate. As a citizen when you complete mayoral commissions you'll be rewarded with experience, node reputation, node currency and some other rewards we don't really know about yet. The node will receive rewards such as commodities, node to node reputation, mandates and buffs to buildings or zones and how much it is rewarded will be dependent on how many players complete it before the time runs out. Commissions can be completed by both citizens and non-citizens however if you are the mayor you would prefer for it to be citizens who complete. The mayoral commission will cost gold from the treasury to be initiated and there will be a limited number of commissions slots available at one time. This is affected by node type, location, node predominant, race and node building choices. There's also going to be a limit on how many commissions you can take at one time. As well as that, the larger a node is will affect the type of mayoral commissions available so a village node will not have the same type of commissions as a metropolis. The next slide was all about policies. So policies are actions that the mayor can take and they can alter
alter a variety of where the node functions. So as an example, Intrepid give of this was the stone policy. If a mate is looking for a lot of stone to be gathered, they can initiate a policy that benefits player mining stone in the zone of influence. Mayors will propose the policy to the citizens and then the citizens will vote on it and depending on the vote, the policy will either be approved or denied. Nodes will have a limited number of proposed or active policies. As mentioned earlier, a mayor can use the mandates to bypass the player vote requirement if it is something they really, really want to do. What policies are available to the node depend on certain conditions. These conditions are node level type, dominant race and also the types of building in the node, the location, events that have happened, the happiness of the node and if the node is at war or it is under siege. Policies also have a cooldown so you can't use the same one over and over again. Some policies may affect vassal nodes but not all of them and some policies will also have a visual change in effect. So I know this is a long video and we've still got loads more, hence why I couldn't fully cover the live stream and it was just turned into a node video, but I'll just jump into service buildings. The next one, obviously, like I've said, is service buildings. There are different types of service building when it comes to nodes. You have your default buildings that come pre-built with the nodes, such as a town hall, the warehouse and the caravan buildings. And then you've got constructed service buildings. There are two types of these and they are active buildings and passive passive buildings. Now active buildings are buildings that are based around artisanship, business, content and politics and these buildings provide a service or a reason for the player to actually visit them. Now passive building subtypes are civic, cultural, fabrication, scholarly and vocation and they provide passive benefits to the node and the zone of influence. All constructed buildings have to be initiated by the mayor and will be voted on by citizens and then built by the players. Once built the active buildings can be upgraded through expansions. Active building expansions require certain passive buildings to have already been built and the expansion trees are designed so as they upgrade they become more focused. An example would be a forge would specialise in armour or weapon making. Plots to build constructed buildings on are predefined. However they are universal. Any constructed building can be built on them but you will want to try and be strategic when it comes to where you place specific buildings as they will be objective points during sieges. There are no unique to node type constructed buildings. The unique buildings are all default buildings that come pre-built in your node. Relics however are location dependent. They could be closer to certain nodes as their POI is closer to a certain node. And you can acquire certain relics which will give you access to certain workstations or will augment certain workstations. But you will have to maintain service buildings and this will be through both resources and gold from the node treasury. If maintenance is not kept up with service buildings, they will enter a state of disarray and will not be usable. And if a building is in a state of disarray or damage during a siege or an event, players can contribute materials to restore the buildings to its normal state and make it operational again. If a mayor wants to demolish or downgrade a building, they will have to spend mandates to do so and it will go to a citizen vote. During a siege, if a node is not destroyed, then there still may be destroyed buildings buildings of a result of the siege. When they're destroyed they will go into rubble state and after a period of time this will become an empty plot and the building can be rebuilt or new buildings can be built instead depending on what the mayor or citizens choose. The final slide was about buy orders. So buy orders are the primary way a node can generate node commodities which were talked about previously as they're needed for building construction, upgrades and maintenance. You can also trade them with other nodes. Think of them as being similar to trade packs in Archer, however, you hand them into the node rather than the traders. Buy orders can be initiated by the mayor and it will use gold from the treasury, but they can also be generated by the node depending on activities. There's a whole UI that comes up for the mayor when they initiate buy orders and they can manipulate how many commodities they are looking for, how long they want the buy order to be active for, which materials are used to complete buy orders, and how much the player is going to be rewarded for the buy order. And a player who completes buy orders will be rewarded with node currency and node reputation and if a citizen completes it it'll generate mandates. Node currency cannot be traded and is bound to the player. It can be used to purchase different types of unique venerable items that exist with the node. These unique vendors supply a large segment of necessary components for crafting and enchantment and node currency stays with you even if you leave the node and go to a new one. The vendors goods and the vendors in general will be locked behind different tiers which 
which will be unlocked depending on your reputation within the node. To increase your node reputation, you'll have to take part in the node activities within social organisation and religions as well. So these bio orders are meant to be a large undertaking, but one of the primary loops for nodes in order to get the ball rolling for certain things. The buy orders can include raw and processed materials, but not crafted goods. Now, I am going to start doing an updated node and a lot of updated videos that are now valid for Alpha 2, the closer we get to it. So for folk going into Alpha 2, they really are prepared and they know everything that's going to be in Alpha 2. And then down the line, obviously, that'll change and I'll have to make new ones for the launch. But hopefully this video to give you a nice breakdown of the information there's much more i need to jump into and i will be jumping into that in the coming weeks and months leading up to alpha 2 you know we're probably a year maybe a year and a half mid i would say mid to late next year for alpha 2 hopefully so there will be a lot more content for preparation for guys going in alpha 2 as well as prepping our guild and getting us all ready i really do appreciate you watching if you could drop a like give it a share in your communities give me any feedback and any comments you actually think about this node were you happy with it from what I've seen overwhelmingly does seem to be a really good response and some really really decent work from Intrepid and the graphical like the graphical side is coming along really nicely especially if you after you've watched the stream if you head over to the YouTube and you check it out in 2k or 4k whatever they're uploading in it really is night and day difference it's going to be so nice getting in but as always appreciate you watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one cheers